for the introduction and thank you to Zaina and the other talented people who always make sure that we never forget Syria. Um, I will start my talk with a short video, a video that I always remake, uh, sometimes in Arabic, in English, in different languages. I just change uh, the photos of the f this short video to show, since we are talking about Syria, to show the important connection between my hometown, Mosul, and Aleppo. Both cities were devastated and destroyed by the recent war. Um, sorry, the video was with a description in Arabic, but probably the photos were explaining that this city now that had that history of exporting and importing culture, goods, a very strong uh, connection through trading between Aleppo, Europe, and even its merchants had their own offices and branches in India and in Europe. This very same city is now completely destroyed and is relying on international humanitarian aid. Is unable to produce its own products, is unable to produce its own agricultural productions. We import uh, whatever you can imagine that you need in your kitchen from other countries. My name is Omar Mohammed. I come from almost 7,000 years old city. It's called Mosul. Uh, the name was given to this city because of its uh, meaning of connecting between two different sites. That's the meaning of Mosul. It's actually the connector between two things. Uh, I need the presentation, please. Yes, this one. Thank you. This photo has nothing to do with that. Anyway, um, I will start with this memory. This is me, my brother, my mother, and other relatives 
in my family. This was in 1992. It was under the embargo, the U.S. embargo, where we had to make the cake with the yogurt. We cannot afford buying eggs at that time. And as you may see this kid and this, the one in the middle with the green, both have died uh, in an airstrike after the liberation of Mosul, during the liberation of Mosul. Uh, I always tend to go back to this memory because at that moment when I asked uh, uh, my mother, why do you use yogurt in, the, in making the cake? I, I didn't understand what does this mean and why should we use yogurt or eggs? Then she started explaining to me how difficult it is to buy eggs, then you have to uh, uh, save more money and you have to uh, afford this money from other things, recalculating your budget. It was a very complicated uh, uh, mechanism for her to buy the eggs. When I grew up, I understood what did this mean uh, and why my mother was always talking about this cake of the yogurt. She still used this example, and that's why I am still attached to this photo, as well as those people who, who were my age, but they died. Um, in 2003, I was um, 17 years old. Um, I remember in that time, it was also connected to my childhood. Uh, in the school, I was kicked out of the class because I asked the teacher, at that time, several questions, and that she was a bit upset with me. Why do you ask questions? I was punished because asking questions. And she said, you cannot ask questions until you grow up and become an adult. Then, after that moment, I went out directly and went to the bookstore to buy a calendar, thinking that buying a calendar would help me to calculate the years and count the years when I become an adult. And this. This was one year before I just became an adult. It was 2003. Uh, the Americans invaded uh, uh, Iraq on, uh, in, in April 8th. It was my birthday. And they occupied Mosul on 10th of April 2003. Everything changed. Uh, uh, extremism, jihadism, whatever they call it, emerged. They started killing people for various reasons, but mainly for asking questions. I thought of my teacher's words at that time, at that moment, and I understood why she was trying to prevent me from asking questions. Uh, the scene has changed, and this was, the American scene was replaced with ISIS, or Al-Qaeda, or Ansar al-Islam, or the Ansar of Sunnah, or the Shia militia, there are many names. I have documented more than 3,000 jihadist groups emerged in Iraq between 2003 to 2014. Uh, I, can, I can name at least 500 of them. I, I, I have them by heart. <coughs> this was the turning point of our history where we started thinking about what home do we imagine? Because if I start talking about Mosul, its history, what happened, it, it might take me decades to explain all of this, and it also needs the context to explain everything about what happened. But this is connected to what home are we imagining? As someone who is forced to leave his city, uh, I lived under the uh, uh, rule of ISIS or the Islamic State in Mosul when they came. Uh, documenting from inside the city what was happening, but then I was forced to leave, and I am unallowed to return back home now because I am wanted both by ISIS and not the government directly, but its proxies, the militias. Both have promised that if I go back, I will be hanged in the old city of Mosul. But I didn't stop, and I tried to reimagine home, reimagine Mosul and what Mosul should we expect, what city should we expect. Then we started with, as you may have, as you may see, this is the picture of 
a musical we organized in front of the destroyed library. It was burned down by ISIS, the Islamic State. We decided to organize a musical to replace the concepts of terrorism, the concepts of extremism that in many cases were imposed on the city, were new to the city. Because when I go back as a historian, go back to read the history of Mosul, all I see is a Jewish merchant living next to a Christian, uh, a Christian farmer uh, uh, working in a farm of a Muslim. A Muslim is living inside the house of a Christian. Islamic uh, 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 words in uh, making the uh, uh, inner side of the church beautiful with its design. I have seen through the history, and when I read the history, I see, I saw all of this, they were connected to each other, they were living together, they liked each other, they had their own problems as many other people might do. Uh, we might disagree on many things, but we can live together. But then we saw all of these scenes of destruction, uh, new concepts of extremism, reconciliation, uh, we have to reconnect between the people, we have to ha make the people talk to each other, then I always ask, why do we need to talk to each other? I mean, why would I need to sit with my neighbor and say, uh, do we have problems? Why can't I just live my normal life? I have my own opinions, and my neighbor, whatever he is, Christian, Jewish, uh, Yazidi, uh, they also can have their own opinions, because in the city of Mosul also we had, uh, and this also makes me proud, that the city of Mosul witnessed in the 14th century, for example, uh, the conflict, the religious conflict between the Church of the East and the Church of Rome. And they were both disputing over few Christians who left Mesopotamia in the second century of Christianity to India and established the Chaldean community there. Then Rome claimed that they belong to Rome, but the Church of Mosul said no, they belong to the Church of Nineveh. I like this kind of dispute, it's normal, we should have it. But what came later wasn't this. It's not the home that we would imagine. They tried to change things. We had the music, they said no, you don't have music, music is haram in your country. But it wasn't. We have a Mosuli musician whose name is Uthman al-Mosuli in the 18th century. He was an imam, a Sufi. He, he, he used to pray uh, uh, all the five prayers, but at the same time he was playing oud beautifully. And he created many of the melodies and composed many of the melodies that are now well known by Um Kalthum, uh, Muhammad Darwish, etc., etc., etc. They say, no, this is not possible. We have to teach you how to play music. Music is not adaptable in your city. But then we wanted to prove that we have young people who can play oud. We also have, they say that you are not a community that can live together. But we say we have, we have had the Jewish community until political problems emerged and they were deported from Iraq. And now we are working very hard to make them part of our story again, because the whole story of Mosul is not well presented. Uh, there are missing parts of the city, but thankfully, um, and ISIS was stupid enough to uh, uh, ignore this, this kind of history, because this is a house, was turned a house, it, it's the synagogue of Mosul, Sasson synagogue of Mosul. We discovered that this thankfully wasn't destroyed during the battle to retake Mosul. So we are working or renovating this uh, uh, synagogue. This is the, the, the city that we are reimagining or recreating. We uh, uh, had this kind of heritage, but it was never presented uh, until I became, as my teacher asked me to, to be, until I became an adult, I found out that we had a Jewish synagogue in Mosul. And I only saw this after 2017. And we have beautiful church too. They say you don't accept Christian. Christian are being prosecuted. Yes, they are, but they are prosecuted by the extremism, by uh, ISIS, by the jihadists. But we never prosecuted Christian. Uh, I remember 
my mother told me that her father, who is my grandfather, found a Christian woman in the city of Erbil. She was abandoned by her family because they, at that time in the 50s, immigrated from Iraq and she left alone. He brought her to her to, to his house in Mosul. And my mother lived with her. My mother was, she's not a Christian, but she was uh, baptized in the church. My mother knows more about the Christianity than uh, probably her Christian neighbor do because she lives with them. She didn't have problem. And when I ask her, did you have any problem with your Christian neighbor? She said, why would I have problem? It wasn't part of their conversation. This is the city that we are imagining. It's the same when we talk about, I can never talk about Mosul without talking about Syria because Mosul and Syria, they were culturally, socially, economically, they were the same part as you probably, if there are historians here or those who, can re who read the history of uh, the Zengid uh, uh, state in both uh, Iraq and Syria, uh, Aleppo and Mosul were both ruled by the same ruler, Nurdin Zengi, who built two mosques, important mosques, and one of them is destroyed in, in Mosul. I don't know about the one in Aleppo, if it was also destroyed. But we had the same architecture, the same, uh, uh, we both like, kind of like the same design, the same uh, 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 heritage. Uh, we live in the same, we have similar values, uh, because we were connected to the world through uh, uh, trading, economy, uh, societies, and many other uh, uh, things. Here is also a location, a historical site was destroyed by ISIS, which represents three religions. This site is the Nabi Yunus, as they say it in Arabic, or Prophet Yuna in English. He is the prophet that, I think the only prophet that all religions agree on. They all like him. Uh, uh, because there are three layers of religious sites and beneath them there is the Assyrian uh, historical palace. And we played the music on this site. It was destroyed by ISIS to show that this is the kind of city we, we would like to imagine. And this is Mosul as well in the past. This has nothing to do with the presentation. <laughs> uh, here we, we also preserved books because they say you don't read. We have books, we can read. We can read in different, also in different languages. These are children from the old city of Mosul. And this is a very important sign here. After the destruction of the city, the local government started demolishing the sites of uh, the city and the people then started resisting this and they started putting on their houses. The owner of the house doesn't want to sell. They don't want to sell their houses, although it's half dest destroyed. They, they want to live in their city. They want to enjoy the heritage, but at the same time to live in a modern life, uh, to, to put between two different lines, two uh, different uh, uh, generations. We hope that the home we can imagine is not a home for one uh, community or uh, uh, one group. We believe in diversity, but at the same time, inclusion, because without the inclusion, we cannot continue together. I hope that one day we can all hold such event in either Aleppo or Mosul. Thank you.